Hey folks, it's Grimwit from Natch Evil, and with me today is Month from Greece, my Greek friend. Hmm. Hello, people of the interwebs. The question today, I think, is, um... Well, shoot, we'll just say, how do you feel about Isaac Asimov? Well, uh, Asimov, uh, I've just recently admit to myself that I have to read the books because, you know, geek. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, I have read iRobot till now and, uh, Prelude to the Foundation. And he he's quite good, actually. Well, yeah, he's a classic science... Some would consider him the best science fiction writer of all time. <clears throat> I don't know if he's the best. He's, he ah. just writes... It's not that he's uh, the best writer I have ever seen. But he, what he writes is... Can can put into words. Uh, let's see. Clever. Uh, huh? Clever. Yes, he has a he has a great understanding of. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I read. Uh, I heard. I'm uh, hearing them because uh, of games. We never have enough uh, time for games and reading. Anyway, and uh, he said that he found that there were two robot uh, stories actually the one that said uh, you know you know what robots are evil pew 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 kill them all and the other was that uh, robots were just there so he wanted to create a universe and stories that <coughs> and stories that you know robots were not just the antagonist or just there he wanted them to be alive or animate anyway. Uh, so he he does that in spades. He's uh, he really brings the robots to life. They are not just there for uh, for someone's uh, enjoyment. You know, they are part of the story. Rather than being your plastic pal, who's fun to be with. Exactly. I have yet to read, uh, uh, well, I actually have only read, like, two, two stories by Asimov. One of them wasn't necessarily a story, but it was good. The other one, um, <clears throat> I'm still getting into it. I was given a book of robot stories <laughs> by Asimov, and I guess I'll see what that's like. I have yet to read it. Uh, I do want to read the Foundation series. It sounds amazing. Uh, yeah, but as I found out, you need to. I found out in a, in the internet. They say that you have to read. You have to begin by the second to last uh, book, the Prelude to Foundation, and then the Forward to Foundation, which is the last book that uh, Asimov wrote, and then the Foundation series. Huh. I yeah. will probably read them in chronological order by the order in which they were written. That's generally how I do these things. Yeah, it's... But I don't know, but I think that the Prelude Foundation and the Forward the Foundation actually are before the Foundation series books. What, written before or take place before? Take place before. All right, then they will probably then they will probably be uh, read last by me. Not that I'm completely ignoring your advice. I am. But, uh... <laughs> well, well I, it's just the way I do things. I like to read things in the order in which they were written. Not so much for the story's sake, but because I want to see also uh, the train of thought that the author has taken. Anyway, it's Asimov himself that said that uh, the books... Should not they were not written in the order they should be read. Hmm. He offers the following chronological order. The Complete Robot. It's uh, 31 short stories about robots. Hmm. The King, that's, it, that's the book I was handed, by the way. Yeah, The Caves of Steel, uh, written in 1954, the first robot novel. The Naked Sun, 
the second robot novel in 57. The Robots of Dawn, 1983, the third robot novel. And, uh, and so on and so on. Because in, the, because in the Foundation series, the, uh, there is the, that Galactic Empire which was formed during his, uh, some of his books. Hmm. Well, I'll continue with my own uh, mindless uh, drone through the way I do books. See, the thing is, is I don't actually want to read Asimov. Oh. Except, well, I don't know, maybe iRobot. But I, I should. I should read Asimov. And the reason why I don't want to uh, isn't because he's bad or anything. It's because uh, it's not my genre. I like mysteries, not science fictions. Unless it's a science fiction mis mystery, which I'm told that uh, uh, iRobot was. Or a series of. So, hmm. We'll see. The one book that I have written for certain of uh, Isaac Asimov was neither sci-fi nor mystery. It was The Sensuous Dirty Old Man. And it is awesome. Sounds awesome. It, uh, Asimov is... Uh, I, I have heard that he has written at least one book for every genre of fiction that exists. And The Sensuous Dirty Old Man was his uh, book of comedy. And it was really funny. <laughs> I did not expect a, sci a fa famous science fiction writer to be so funny. I'm not sure if everybody would agree with me, but uh, eh, fuck them. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's Asimov for me. I mean, uh, I was uh, in the... Uh, and the friends always told me, yeah, Asimov, yeah, fuck, yeah, he's good, he's good. and I <laughs> pretended that I have read him. <laughs> well, that's the definition of a cla classic by Mark Twain. A classic is a book that everybody wants to have read, but nobody wants to read. <laughs> no, I want to read, I want to, always wanted to read uh, Asimov. Well, well, you've got time, you're young yet, read up. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the problem with, uh, with all that, it's, uh, I hate I hate fads. I hate people. Uh, a group of people coming and tell me, "Yeah, you should, you should watch this. You should read this." I hate it. So when everybody was uh, all like uh, Ugh, Harry Potter, of course I took the Harry Potter books and read them. Wait, you hate fads, but you read read Harry Potter because it was a fad? No, because everybody I knew were like. Oh no, Harry Potter is a copy of Timothy Hunter. Oh, okay. And he's evil. <laughs> I, I have generally heard that if you take the same idea and give it to 13 different writers, you'll get 13 different stories. Um, I think people have a problem discerning the difference between I copying ideas and plagiarism. Well... People are idiots. Whoa! Just got into a crash that I did not expect. Oh well. Oh. Uh, I guess well. I'm headed to Hamburg. Mm. What are you going to do to Hamburg? What am I going to do with what now? And Hamburg is Hamburg. Oh, is it? Okay. Yep. Uh, I am going to repair my truck because it needs it, and then I might get some gas. And I might get a job, but I don't have a job right now because for some reason when I started the game, it teleported me to the middle of a the middle of a highway with no explanation. So oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Just what? Let's try to go to Hamburg. Okay, I gotta take this exit for Hamburg. I'm not really looking at a map or, or anything. I'm just sort of flying by the seat of my pants here. And I, um, I do need to get into Isaac Asimov, and I had uh, what, what finally was kind of the key
key, something that kind of turned in my head that says, okay, now I really need to read this guy, was um, SF Debris did a special um, review of the Foundation series. Not, not really a review so much as a summary, a keyed with his own thoughts. Uh, SF Debris, after all, does opinionated reviews. He, he is famously saying that this is all about my opinion and what I think. <laughs> According, yeah. to, according to his own words, I um until then I always thought of it as just kind of like another one of those classics that I should probably put up on the shelf and pre- pretend like I'm going to read but never actually read, because I am um I don't know I just like uh, Rex Stout more than anyone else and nobody knows who Rex Stout is so okay there you go. Uh, Hamburg is this way. What did you ask? Who is Rick Stout? Rick Stout is the writer of the Nero Wolf series of detective novels. And they are very, very, very well written. Uh. Yeah, nobody knows this stuff. Um, For a very short amount of time, uh, Nero Wolf was a TV show on A&E. So you can actually find some Nero Wolf movies or... or, uh, Actually, avoid the movies. The movies suck. But uh, the TV show was pretty good. Uh Is is it anything like that uh, group you showed me where the people are... uh, Power Ranger SQ... Huh? That's not the Beavers. Uh, They were a band that they were... Super, super powered. They had super powered personas, and they were something like, uh, "The fuck is this?" You know. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, most people don't. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, super powered personas, which immediately makes me think of persona, but I know that's not what you're talking about. Yeah, well, you're you usually. Um, <clears throat> How to, how to say it. Okay. Your cup of tea is weird. Thanks. Okay. So you you put some things sometimes that are completely out of... Completely, let's say, random. All right. It's random. Yeah. And that was one of those things. And you told me they were... Okay. It'll come to you. No, the only thing that comes to me is the uh, the song Wynonna's Great Brown Beaver. Uh, oh, oh. Hmm, <clears> hmm. <throat> you're actually making me think about what it could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it's, it's completely... Yeah. Are you talking about Freaked? No, it couldn't have been Freaked. Freaked was a different story altogether. It had nothing to do with superpowers. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, mm, mm. Now, there are just too many possibilities of what it could be. It's not narrowed down enough. Yeah. Oh well, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Well, what's your cup of tea? Because my cup of tea is usually very surreal and oddball, that kind of thing. My cup of tea is actually trying to figure out what is good to read. That's a very difficult problem. Yeah, because as I told you, I hate I hate fads. I oh. I want to read the the Martin books. Oh, the Game of Thrones books. Yeah, and uh, I have people. Screaming to me that I did not watch the series. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Look, I know what's happening. What's happening? And if I was watching this uh, series, the, f- the moment the red wedding uh, happened, I would uh, abandon it. Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> Martin is a fucking asshole." <laughs> Okay, I'm sure that's certainly a minority opinion. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Although, no, no, actually, no, actually, I take that back. Considering how many of his own heroes he kills, that might not be so such a uh, such a small spoken opinion. I don't like. I tried to read. Uh, no, I didn't try to read. I tried to watch um, uh, Game of Thrones, and I f got through the first episode before I decided that it wasn't for me. Uh huh. And I, uh, my my wife is completely addicted to it now. Uh huh. Hamburg Street. Well, ahead. well, it, it gets it got things that are cool. Okay. Um, it got cool things in it. Okay, it's a, it's not a completely bad series. The problem is that uh, dear Mr. Martin um, depends on uh, shock value. Hey. What what value? Shock value, you know. Oh, uh, how much it sucks. No, not sack. Shock. Shock. Oh. Electric shock. Oh, shock. Okay, got, gotcha. Gotcha. <coughs> anyway. There was an interview with Hitchcock that told them that... Uh, uh, how to dr that told them how to dramatize a simple scene. Uh, let's think about the two people that enter a room and talk about something. We, we don't care about what it is. Oh, yeah. And the, suddenly, the... And suddenly the bomb explodes. If if uh, you do not show someone putting the bomb under the, the table, there is no drama. It's you're like what? Well, it's a non sequitur. It's a, it is a shock, as you say. And yeah. uh, Hitchcock was pointing out how to make a scene more suspenseful. You can make any scene more suspenseful by putting a bomb under the table. So it was actually called the bomb under the table uh, yeah. method. It's not. Yeah, but we we have to extrapolate from that. It's not only the bomb under under the table. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Now. You have something like the Red Wedding. You know what happens there? I'm familiar with the Red Wedding. Okay. There is no no mention before that the phrase the hosts of the wedding have anything to do with the Lannisters. Okay. Okay. And some and suddenly everybody dies. So so question, have you read the part of the story with the red wedding? I have read before and after the red wedding and I ask people that have read the books and I trust them. Hmm. About such things. I mean <coughs> I don't know enough about the book to have any leverage to and defend R.R. Uh, R. Martin, but I'm certain there must have been some kind of foreshadow for the Red Wedding. None whatsoever. The only foreshadow that you get is uh, Tywin, the patriarch of Lannister, saying that the boy, meaning the... Come on. Mm, I don't know. Sorry, I can't help you here. One of the star kids, anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, does not know enough to be afraid. Oh. Yeah, I mean, he obviously doesn't know enough to be afraid because he's not. Uh, because Tywin has been around, uh, what, uh, 50, 60 years? And he has been plotting and doing stuff, and uh, he has been the, the hand of the king for two for two different kings. And usually they say the hand of the king rules, and well, the king just kings, you know. And uh, so yeah, of course Tywin's a schemer and knows more things than uh, the Stark boy. But there is no, there is no. Thing. What's this? That's. Uh, Something like, hey, father, what is this uh, raven that uh, just came in? Oh, it's a, a raven coming from the twins. Oh, okay. Having not uh, read the Game of Thrones or watched any of the TV show, I need to inform you that I have no clue 
what is going on in this conversation or or how to okay. approach it. So they, I'm I'm afraid you are you have me at a complete disadvantage here. They use ravens instead of uh, of uh, pigeons cool. for some reason. Okay, for like hunting, hunting pigeons, no, pigeons that hunt. For message sending. Actually, I'm sure if you put a knife in the beak of a pigeon, then it would be an excellent hunter. Mm, don't know. Knife in its beak. I mean, Hitchcock beak. predicted that all all birds would get knives in their beaks and start running after people. So, uh, I'm sure this is this is reality. So, how? Okay, you've read R.R. Uh, R. Martin and you've read Asimov. I assume you've read Asimov. By I've now. read Asimov, and I've read a lot less Martin. <laughs> okay, which do you prefer? Asimov. Why not just read more Asimov and not read Martin? Well, the first thing is that Asimov writes intelligently. Oh. Uh, okay. He tells you that you know something. This happens because this, and that happens because that. And uh, he keeps you wondering what could happen if. Does that make any sense? Yes, that is actually w what proper sci-fi is. Science fiction is what if as a story. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't he doesn't hide facts. He gives you clues about what will happen if you think hard enough. He doesn't. He of course, of course, he doesn't spell it to you what will happen. Huh? Yeah. He's. Uh, he he writes with uh, with people in mind. He doesn't write for himself. I. Martin, Martin writes for himself. All right. Um. Usually, when you write for when you're told, uh, I need to start wrapping this up, but um. The whole writing for yourself thing, that's not terrible, because uh, no matter what you write, somebody's going to want to read it. Uh, if you haven't read any uh, Nero Wolf books, that's my flavor. And it is not surreal or strange. It's not like the Hawkline monster. God, that was a weird book. Um, sorry, that was a distraction. I just recently thought about the Hawkline monster. Nero Wolf books are... Um, the mystery isn't always who done it. Sometimes the mystery is how do you get out of this given the situations because Nero Wolf isn't just a detective. He's also really, really, really ungodly devious. He is not a nice man. <laughs> I love that about him actually. He's not he's not like um um uh, Sam Spade. He's, I wouldn't call him hard nose. In fact, I'd call him soft bellied. But he is sometimes one of the most devious people ever. Like, he's a better bad guy than the bad guy. Alright. Uh -huh. Alright. With that uh, out of the way, I've said what I had to say, and it's pretty much time to kind of wrap up the video while it's raining and pouring at night. Hmm. We need to talk about other books next time. Probably more about Isaac Asimov. How about how about we both read an Isaac Asimov book and then we'll get back together. Okay, which one do you want to read, the Dear Grimm? I don't know. I guess I'll find a copy of the first Foundation book and read that. Okay, Even though I, I know it's part of a trilogy. I think I will uh, tackle either Robots and Empire or the currents of space, something like that. Okay. Or, or continue reading uh, the complete bo uh, robot. Hmm. I've wanted to read the iBoat robot. How about we both read iRobot and then we'll we'll come I, back. And... I've heard dry robot about uh, two weeks ago. Oh, damn. Oh well, whatever. Whatever we read, we'll we'll meet back here after we finish reading a book of Isaac Asimov and we'll talk about it. Until okay. then. That is it, my friend. Goodbye, interwebs. Goodbye, you know. everyone. <laughs> and uh, I will see you next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Louis, Marv, Chce, Won, Jai, Wos, Tkedjbas, Hath, Ne, Kardulk, Ne, Tne, Maktad, Lengi, Ta, Lelvi, Tan, Wot, Jesem, Ne, Tush, Thaum, Yam, Fa, Pua, Knigma, Ra, Tath, Zero, Yeth, Net, Zerdna, Woi, Nank, Wosh, Eth, Na, Ebut, Snow, Pites, Va, Oi, Wood, Ye, He, Do, You, Have, Sia, Wans, Do, Be, Hun, The, Show, Can, Yo, Hun, Brus, and The, Roars, Thas, Har, Gum, Gin, How, Huff, My, Mwath, Shoot, Han, Message, Sto, Nas, Evil, Has, Ismail, Das, Kam, Han, Hen, Kuz, Rach, Hen, Tha, Subject, so he I know his from you and then you throw was in 